All right, in this fifth example of doing circular motion problems, we're going to look at vertical circles. Now, to be honest, if you looked at our last video on doing circular problems with two or more forces, this is honestly no different. However, there are so many questions. It's such a common thing to ask questions about um, objects where the circle is vertical as opposed to on a horizontal surface that it's worth taking a moment to, to look through an example. All right, so in this case, we have a ball that's being swung around in a vertical circle. So in other words, this is down, this is up. This isn't on a horizontal surface of any kind. So it's actually going down and then back up. Um, the circle, the length of the string is 65 centimeters. The speed of the ball is, and this is important, a constant speed of 2.6. So later on, we're going to refer to that. So it's always a constant speed, even though it's going up and down. They're doing something to keep this ball always going the same speed. I don't know how, but somehow magically in the problem, that's what's going on. And the question is, is what is the tension at the bottom of the loop? Okay, so if I wanted to do this, I draw my free body diagram, right? So when the ball is at the bottom of the loop, um, we draw our free body diagram. We know we have force of gravity uh, uh, down, sorry, and then we have tension up. Now, I've just drawn these forces an arbitrary length, and they look about the same length to me. But before we move on, we should pause and always stop and think, does this make sense? So if I'm going in a circle, should these two really be the same length? Well, we know that in order to go in a circle, you need a centripetal net force or force towards the center. So the only way for this to go in a circle is if tension is actually larger than the force of gravity at this moment. So I'm going to make that larger. All right, now I'm ready to list my variables as shown, making sure that the distance for the length of the string, which is the radius, is in meters and not centimeters. And now we're ready to pick an equation, customize it, and solve. F net equals MA. Again, we're going to use centripetal acceleration and the F net to customize it. Over here, before we do, it's worth pausing for a moment and asking ourselves, what is this really F net, right? I have tension up, I have force of gravity. If I were to add these two together, add with like air quotes, add these two together, uh, the net force should be the magnitude of tension minus the magnitude of the force of gravity, right? Because they're in opposite directions and one of them should be negative. All right, so I'm going to use centripetal acceleration and I get T minus FG, right? This minus that is what's left over, the net force, equals MA, where V squared over R is A. Now, at this point, I think I've got most everything. If I replace force of gravity with MG, I've got M, I've got R, I've got V, so MG, MV, R, I got everything. Now I can just do some algebra, rearrange, solve, plug, chug, solve, done. There we go. We got a tension of apparently. 6.5 newtons. Let's take a look at the have versus the need. A common question that they like you to look at is to look at the forces at the bottom of the circle, but also at the top of the circle. So this is a common thing though. Sometimes they'll have you look at both or they'll have you just look at one or the other. Very rarely do they have you look at any point except for the bottom or the top of the circle. So the question is, is, is the tension specifically greater at the top of the circle or at the bottom of the circle? We've already done the bottom of the circle. That's down here. Let's take a look at the top. Now, we know that as the ball goes around, it's always going around at a constant speed. So over here, have versus need. On the need side, we have the exact same speed. It's the exact same radius. If that's the case, then it should have the same centripetal acceleration, which means I need the exact same force as I did over here. Now that doesn't mean it's the exact same tension. Remember that means we need the exact same net force, right? MA is net force. So this is how much net force I need towards the center. Uh, if it is going in a circle, which we know from the context of the problem that it goes in a circle, then we'll just magically have the exact same amount of net force. Remember, this is also provided by a rope, and ropes are reactionary, so if it needs more, it'll pull harder. If it needs less, it'll just pull more lightly on the ball. So I'm going to draw a free body diagram at the top. I still have the exact same force of gravity as I had before, uh, but now before I draw my tension, I want to stop and think for a second. The goal is to have the exact same net force, right? So before my net force was calculated by saying, okay, a tension had to be extra big because I subtract force gravity if it's in the opposite direction. So whatever's left over is my net force. Well, this time force of gravity is not fighting the force inwards. It's actually pointing inwards, which makes it 
a lot easier to get a net force inwards. So how do I actually get that net force inwards? Well, my tension is actually pulling down as well, right? So instead of one force going inwards and one force fighting that, I actually have two forces working together. I can't have tension be very big if it's going to pull down. And if I want with gravity and if i want these together added up to equal the same net force as this tension down here minus force of gravity so if we put that in equation format it would look like tension minus force of or sorry plus force of gravity because they're working together equals what you need right mv squared over r and we can rearrange it like this so from here we can see okay look here i had tension and then i subtracted a value to get the resulting net force i need over here, I have tension and I'm adding something, right? They're working together. Tension is a lot lighter at the top. It doesn't need to work as hard because force of gravity is working with it. These are common examples of vertical uh, circle problems.